it's springtime in our house with my beautiful daffodils from my neighbour in full bloom. Oh my gosh, do you know what? I didn't realise how much I liked daffodils in the house. That's so weird, especially in this little jar. I feel like it looks like it's just been thrown together. And it, every time I walk upstairs, it makes me so happy. Also, just noticing some little baby shoots coming through. So this is one of the ferns from our garden centre. So it doesn't look quite as happy as my patch plants one. There's a few like snapped branches. Um, but I'm nursing it back to health on my little table up here. But yeah, a little bit of yellow sunshine in the morning. However, <laughs> however, springtime inside. It is most definitely winter again outside, although you can hear the baby lambs in the field. Oh, but it's snowing. <sighs> Good afternoon, everyone. I am back in my dressing room and I'm actually in a dressing gown. I, do you know what? There is one thing about me and I don't know, I have these weird things about videos, but I hate starting a video in a dressing gown. I don't know why. I feel like it's, maybe it's to do with the fact that I'm like one of those people that I like to get up and get dressed and then start my day. Um, by the way, that's not always every day as well. Sometimes like the day just runs away and I don't even end up showering until like two o'clock because I'm being pulled in every direction. But yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I just really hate like standing here, but I was walking around trying to find something to get dressed into. And I realized I've got so much to show you and so much that I want to try on with you that me getting dressed, it's almost like makes no sense. And plus it is so miserable in England at the moment, I actually can't put into words. So we had quite like, not a heavy snowfall, but we had snowfall last night and um, it's settled, but it's rained and it's already like just slushy. And um, basically, I don't know if you can tell, but I had my hair done yesterday. I um, popped down to London, I had some meetings and then I also um, went to see Despina. You might notice that obviously um, it's, I think it's a little bit blonder, um, but we've got a bit brighter again. It's this long process that I'm on and I had my hair cut a couple of weeks ago with Ruby. And so this was my like color root touch up. And just, I always get so many questions about my color. Basically, I don't have any color on my hair. I have gray hairs and things like that, but what we basically use the balayage technique to disguise my grays, just so that they blend in. Cause I mean, gray hair doesn't really bother me, but I'm so sporadic with it. Like I get gray bits here and I just get a few little straggles on my hairline. So what Despina does is like drags it up high so that as my hair grows out, it kind of almost blends in because I don't want to have any color on my hair. And this is my natural like base color just with um, like the balay balayage technique done on top. I'm trying to get into the, the habit it. Um, I was talking to a friend who also gets her hair done at Despina and I was messaging her and she was like I wash my hair once a week. I wash my hair twice a week um, but I would love to get down to once a week and so I'm gonna go on the hunt for like products to basically get me to a point where I can just wash my hair once a week um, because I find that when I don't wash my hair my hair loses its volume it goes a bit limp maybe this is a mission we can go on together or if you're someone that washes your hair if you've got like quite thick coarse hair and you wash your hair once a week let me know how you do it like is there a specific product I have to be really careful with dry shampoos um, but I would like something that's maybe a little bit more gritty than a dry shampoo I got back at 11 o'clock last night it was a long old hair situation, um, but I, I loved it. I'm just glad that I'm refreshed, ready for spring and my birthday in a couple of weeks time as well. And as I was coming home, it was snowing so heavily that we were going like so slow, but now it really is just wet and miserable. But anyway, 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 anyway. Before we go any further in this video, I obviously unboxed the items that I got at El Corte Inglés in the vid- well no, I, I unboxed it in Madrid because obviously I wasn't going to take all of those boxes home. So what I wanted to do was to quickly drop in the bits that I bought and hopefully then slot in a bit of a try-on. I wasn't sure if I needed to do another try-on because I obviously showed a lot of the items in situ, like I was wearing them in the, in the personal shopping. so. Maybe you don't need that and you'll see them in the video anyway, but I want to cut back, just go slightly back in time to Madrid and show you the bits and unbox everything with you and show you what I got because I was obviously over the moon with how much you enjoyed that video. It went straight to like my number one video for the month and I'm like, whenever I get the opportunity to take you somewhere shopping with me, 
I fully, fully embrace it because a lot of department stores like that and luxury department stores are a bit funny with filming like inside. And so when you get clearance, like when I've done it in the past, anywhere else, like places like Harrods, I like grasp it with both horns, if that's the saying. And so it was really, really wonderful to have sort of like a blanket, you can film everything opportunity. And I loved how much you enjoyed it as well. So yeah, thank you so much for making that video such a success. So I'm gonna cut back, show you what I got. Let me know what you think in the comments and yeah. Good morning everyone. We have gone back in time a little bit and we are now back in Madrid, but I wanted to unbox the items that I bought at El Corte Inglés with you. And I thought if I put it in the video with all of the shopping, it's gonna be a bit much. So I thought I'd do it here in my hotel room and then slot it into a video um, when I get home, just so that you're kind of here for it and I can explain everything. I have about 20 minutes until we have to leave to the airport, there's a guy leaf blowing outside and this is not how I pictured this going, but <laughs> we're gonna roll with it anyway, because I want to show you all of the stuff um, as well that I bought sort of like here, but also on the way here because I picked up some shoes if you didn't see it on my TikTok. Anyway, I'm faffing because I am rushing and I still need to get all of this stuff into my suitcase and I don't actually know how I'm gonna do that, so. This is going to be interesting. I'll let you know if I get home and all is well, basically. Um, okay, first and foremost, let's get into one of the bags from El Corte Inglés. And you watched me try this on and I could not leave it behind. I would have loved to have worn it today, but I wanted to unbox it with you, so I needed to be dressed. Um, but this is the sage two-piece that I got from Vince. This is a silk blouse as light as a feather and so elegant like it's just elegant loungewear quite honestly just couldn't resist this especially the colorway and the fact that it came out on my color chart that i had done was a step in the right direction i think all of the colors that i picked were colors that were on my were, that were on my color chart and that made me so so happy so i'm going to look forward to wearing this at home this is going to be such a great for me anyway i work from home quite a lot um I also travel quite a lot, so outfits like this are really important because I always wanna feel good. Feeling good and looking good is something that really helps like m me mentally, just like getting up in the morning and getting dressed. It's that kind of vibe. I like to feel nice, I like to wear nice clothes, I like to look nice. So these kinds of things where I don't have to compromise on that. I take my hat off to the girls that can wear hoodies and leggings and like feel spectacular. I'm so jealous, I wish I could, I just don't. Um, so that's the first one. This is the bat. This is the dress that nearly didn't make it. And in all honesty, I think if I unbox this and unpackage it with you, I'm going to regret it. But this is the red dress. They managed to get me the dress in my size. I have not tried this on. Um, it is in a, a suit carrier, so that's really good as well, because it means that it will um, transport a bit better. So what I'm not gonna do is unbox this with you now. Well, it's worst unboxing, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, but I am gonna try it on with you at home so that you can see it on. The length of this is amazing. It's actually like, it's to the floor, but it's not to the floor. So I could wear this with flats and be perfectly comfortable. It's like one of those dresses that you could wear on holiday and feel really, really special, but still wear like Iran sandals with it or something like that. I love how much of a nod this is to Carolina Herrera as well. And this is El Corte Inglés own brand. So it's 250 pounds. For this amount of dress, I just don't know how they've done it, but it's so beautiful. And when I walked out, everyone was like, <gasps> I was like, okay, I need this dress. I need this dress. Um, so I'll try it on for you now, and you can let me know what you think in the comments um, on that one. Next one was a bit of a, oh, a bit of an impulse, but actually I kind of changed my mind on this because I've always said when it comes to Louis Vuitton pieces, um, as much as possible, I try and buy them um, antique. But this one, I actually realized it's so small. I'd quite like to have this um, as actually mine and a bit of an heirloom of mine. And then one day when I'm long gone, it will be an antique and maybe this will be sitting in someone's, someone's house somewhere. Imagine someone watching this video, because I don't know what happens to your videos on YouTube when you die. That's quite morbid, but imagine someone watching this video, if YouTube is still around or whatever, and this is like a hundred years from now, and they have this box sat on their dressing table, because I'm actually going to... 
let's get into it. So I've been looking for this for a while and um, basically Louis Vuitton is offering this service where if you buy one of their luggage trunk pieces, um, you can take it to one of their artists and you can have any design um, put onto it. Now, I think I'm just going to go for the classic um, initials. I think I'll go like either side. Part of me also wants to do something wild and wonderful, but this is like the smallest um, trunk that they do. This is like a kind of like almost a makeup box or something like that. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna take this to the one in London and I'm gonna have whatever design I want put onto this and it's going to be my heirloom because obviously I've got my antique trunks that have other people's initials on them but I thought for this one piece, I'm going to do this for me. They also said that a lot of couples have them as like their bedside table trunks. I would love to do that, to have that on my bedside table and Ali have one on his. Um, but yeah, it's the perfect size. I love this so much and obviously I'm hoping it will age, but yeah, Louis Vuitton trunks for me is like, it's my, it's my love language. I'm slowly working my way through all of my shopping. I also, oh, it's quite heavy. So I went to Clay de Poe just because I um, thought I would pick up, oh my gosh, they put in loads of little testers, how cute. Yeah, that was the only thing that I was really sad about. I went to La Prairie and I wanted to try their creams, like their really rich creams. And I asked them if I could have a sample. And um, they said, no, you can only have samples if you're buying something. And I uh, initially I was like, what? But then I, then Carrie was like, no, but Lydia, imagine how many people go into these kinds of like um, concessions and their, their counters and just ask for testers all the time so that they can use these amazing products. And I was like, oh yeah, you're, you're right. So I was annoyed because I really wanted to try it. Like as a genuine customer, I really wanted to try the creams, um, but alas, I could not. So I stocked up on the Clé de Peau Lip Glorifier and they have given me some creams. Obviously I have loads of Clé de Peau at home because I love them and have loved them for many, many years. This is their Precious Gold Vitality Mask. Uh, this is Regenerate Supreme, oh, eye cream. Um, but yes, I, I stocked up because it was tax free. So I was like, I'd rather buy these now and save a bit of money on them. Um, so that's exactly what I did. Um, then the final one is in another suit carrier, which I think maybe I'm not going to take out as well. So I'll just try it on, but you saw this on. This is my Carolina Herrera dress. I didn't get the floral dress, sadly. Carrie managed to talk me out of it, to be honest. Um, this was the Hermes orange dress, which just completely stole my heart. And it was on my color chart, so it was perfect. Um, so I will cut to a cutaway of me trying this on for you as well, so that you can um, get to grips with how it looks and also I'm going to style it up properly because I didn't have my tan flats I would probably put one of my Hermes twillies with it sunglasses all of that kind of stuff and um I didn't have that with me so yes again another suit carrier going straight in the case little I love CH by Carolina Herrera I feel like it doesn't get enough love as a brand because I think it's absolutely beautiful the noise outside I am so sorry you're gonna hate me the next bag I got again was another Carolina Herrera one and this was one of their mini kiss the mini tint balm in orange splash and then I got the pink and white case um I love Carolina Herrera lipsticks and beauty bits I always have and um I think that they've done a wonderful thing of encapsulating so much of the beauty of the brand in their makeup and I was completely stolen on this so I will try this on for you at home I'm actually going to put it together as well I love that it's a mini but I would have just loved to buy it to buy it as a full size as well but they only offer this one as this like mini keychain so I am um, oh how do we aha there we go pop that in there so again it's this corally kind of color orange splash very up my street and then I can basically attach it to my keychain. The only thing that I would worry about is that I would lose that. So it'll probably just end up in my handbag loose. Then the final, the final uh, bits and pieces. I've made such a mess. This is so loud. And then the final bits from El Corte Inglés was some food bits. We've got some beautiful olive oil, some coffee, some chocolate. I believe they've even given us some gluten-free biscuits. These are all from the Club del Gourmet in El Corte Inglés, which is so spectacular think Harrods Food Court, but 
kind of a bit more modern, but still with that old time feel. It's really, really lovely. Um, so those are my food bits from there. And then finally, I have already unboxed these, but I picked out these Chanel flats and I've worn these. Um, these have rubbed slightly, but I think they would naturally because they're coming up slightly higher on my heel. I love these and I'm so annoyed at myself because I actually used to have the quilted all black version. I should never have sold them. Um, it was before I understood about timelessness and like the beauty of having things that are intrinsically linked to the brand's heritage and these really are. Um, I love this colorway as well. I thought this would look so cute with my black Hermes because I really struggle with wearing all black flats and so this is a really nice sort of happy medium. So yeah, I got those, size five, got them at the airport and the lady was really, really helpful. I was not expecting them to be in my size. So I was super happy about that. Anyway, I'm gonna segue back to the UK. I'm gonna ram all of this in a suitcase somewhere and we will catch up there. But I hope you enjoyed seeing what I bought. And if you missed the video from El Corte Inglés, I will link it in the description box down below so you can watch the whole experience because if you're looking to do some tax-free shopping, I've got the video and the place for you to go. Anyway. Of course they stop leaf blowing now, it's perfect. <laughs> and we're back in the room. Yeah, so I've, um, I've positioned like, I've obviously not everything is now unpacked because a lot of them are in their like suit carriers, but this little Ujimi flip here. But yes, this little Ujimi flip is sat on here at the moment, it's got nothing in it. I haven't like thought about, I think I might just put some perfumes in it or something like that, because at the moment I have my little Penhaligon's Empressa perfume here. But yeah, I was gonna put maybe like some perfumes in there just as like a little perfume trunk I need to file away my Holland Cooper bits and bobs that you would have seen in my last video and um, I just need to basically file some bits and pieces away basically I um, ordered some bits from Hermes I've also received a gift from Parisian Sweet he like basically messaged me to say I've sent you something I hope you love it kind of thing and I was like you don't have to send me anything. I'm a customer, like happy customer. But very, very kindly, he sent me something from Hermes as well. I'm obviously imagining that it's vintage and um, it, that's obviously something that I'm really getting more and more into and embracing so much more. There was actually a, a comment on one of my, on the video from El Corte Inglés that um, someone was like, oh, have you ever thought about this? And like, I really feel like, I feel like we're on this journey together as well. Like. When I started YouTube, like the videos that did well, it was like ASOS hauls, this haul, and like you would do all of those things. And I'm, I, I don't think it's any like secret that I've been, you know, things are, things are changing. I don't want to entitle every video like things are changing because things are changing all the time. But like I am thinking a bit better about things and you know, whereas a year ago I was very much like trend driven, like if there was a new it bag out, I was buying it and I'm not doing that anymore. Um, I keep getting served these videos at the moment on TikTok where they're like bags that are just so outdated now. And I just want to make sure that I'm never like in a position where any, first of all, anyone saying something like that is ever going to make me think differently about the things that I purchase. I'm buying things that I love and no trend is ever gonna dictate it to me. I'm like, I definitely feel like the luxury industry at the moment has got a little bit out of hand. For me, luxury is like, is the craftsmanship of a piece teamed with um, the longevity, like you're spending that much money, you want it to last in your wardrobe. And I definitely feel like at the moment, there's almost like, and I, I think I touched on this before, but there's almost like fast fashion, but for, um, the luxury industry now and I'm trying to be conscious and this is me and never like I always feel like whenever I talk about something like this that I'm like learning people are always like oh my god you're shading this person I am never shading anyone and I always want to preface these things because I can't tell you how many times I'll come across like someone's video and that it's like Lydia was shading you in the comments and I'm like this has to stop like I am a, an entity of my own and I have my own opinions. And if those opinions fit another person's choices, that doesn't mean that I'm shading them. It's just that we're different people and neither of us are right or wrong. I'm not telling you this because I think that I'm right. I'm telling you this because in my set of morals, this makes sense to me and it makes me feel better. And it makes me feel like I'm finding a way to enjoy fashion, which is something that I do really, really enjoy, whilst trying to remove any of the, well, not remove, but make peace and also be a bit better with my choices. That's the only thing that I'm trying to do. I think we're all on the same journey 
to be better people. And these people that you might think that I'm talking about, they're probably like doing way more in terms of like not eating meat or something like that. And it's just, everyone's doing whatever suits them. And it, it, it doesn't ever have to be an attack on somebody else. And um, so for me personally, this whole like trend culture at the moment is something that I'm battling with. And it's a very much a personal battle where I'm trying to stay away from things. I have to look at things and I have to have this checklist in my mind, right, okay, what is what does the longevity of this piece look like? Whether that's due to the craftsmanship or whether that's due to, to, to the lifespan of the, the design. And um, that's kind of where I'm at. However, that being said, I feel like at the moment I'm on this weird journey and I'm gonna show you, I bought something from Jasper Conran, which I've never actually bought before. Obviously I bought the orange shirt dress from Carolina Herrera, which I am so excited to wear, you have no idea. And I bought that, it's so perfect in my wardrobe. I feel like all I do is I buy shirt dresses. I feel like I'm so repetitive, I'm like this is another shirt dress. But I feel like I'm also on, on the quest constantly to find different shirt dresses for different occasions. Like I've got my Amazon shirt dress, which is obviously long into the floor, but I saw, but it doesn't have as much fabric in the skirt that I would like. Like the Carolina Herrera one has such great fabric in the skirt. So one of the things that I did order, and I haven't unwrapped it yet, is this from Jasper Conran. It seems like Jasper Conran is like the shirt dress atelier of the internet because they have these in every single color like if you are wanting bright pink cobalt blue all of those colors they've got it but i wanted a classic white midi as well because my amazon dresses are perfect for like summer spring summer time can't wear them when it's like wet in my opinion because they're so long it just kicks up the back so i wanted like a midi one that i could wear with like tights when it's miserable like this and I'm already so impressed with the, the fabric of it because it has that sort of shiny, shiny dress detail to it, but more fabric in the, okay, it's still quite long, but it's not as long. Um, it comes with a belt as well, but I knew, I checked before I ordered it because I knew that I wouldn't want to, to wear the belt. It's got pockets, um, but it has a sort of like sash belt detailing to it, but yeah. And it's also not a full, like to the bottom shirt dress. It does only unbutton to the to the mid waist area. Elastic waisting to the back as well, which is also very similar to my um, Amazon one. But again, I wanted it to feel like, it's almost like a satin, like a cotton sateen or something like that. I'm not sure if you can see. Pure white, which I'll have to obviously offset it with something a little bit warmer as I learned on my trip. I'm actually just really impressed. And I, again, I'm, Having a hundred shirt dresses is not the point, but um, I'm trying to find the perfect one. And also um, I know that these are things because they're like classics, they'll stay in my wardrobe. What I do at the moment is if I'm ever stuck for something to wear, I go onto Pinterest and I'm like classic outfits. And I'm like, am I gonna be wearing that in however long? Yes, okay, then you can look for something similar. And I'm just trying to be better. I am not the best. This is not me preaching you to tell you that I am the best. I'm just hoping that if you're watching this and you were kind of feeling the same way as me, maybe my thought processes might help just a little bit. Um, so anyway, that's what I got from Jasper Conran. This is the belt, but in all seriousness, I'm not going to use this. I think it's it, it's a design detail to make it very much Jasper Conran, but it's not for me. I think I'll stick a bright pink belt with it. I'm joking. It will be my tan belt. <laughs> well, I was massively interrupted when I was sort of knee deep in getting into the unboxings and I still haven't got into my order. This is, order has been sat there for weeks and I haven't even opened it with you. Um, but it's been an absolute madhouse today and even Ali's like, I'm gonna have to work tonight. But one of the things that we want to do is he's basically been trialing dough for our pizza oven. Our outdoor kitchen isn't out, isn't fitted yet. Hopefully, we're really hoping it's gonna be done before our birthday so that we can do like a bit of a pizza party with the outdoor kitchen if the weather permits. Um, but in the interim, we want to trial all of the different doughs to find the one that's the best so that Ali can obviously get to grips with the, the pizza oven. Some dough has arrived. We've got two sourdough, a gluten-free and a normal one. So he's gonna be testing that out today. So I thought whilst I'm waiting to get into the other boxes with you, I um, will go downstairs and see how Ali gets on with that. But also I just unpackaged this. This is the, maybe this is the product that I'm looking for. This is the Hair by Sam McKnight Cool Girl Barely There Texture Mist. 
So I thought maybe I could play around with this to see if it'll give me um, a bit more like grit. I just hope it doesn't irritate my scalp. <laughs> I'm sure the girls from Sam McKnight will tell me that I'm doing this wrong. Millie, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't want it to dry out my hair. I also need these blooming curls to drop, but I just want, I mean, it's definitely given a bit of volume. Smells lovely as well. That's one thing about Sam McKnight products as well. They smell incredible. His heat protector spray smells like a diptyque fragrance. So I feel like if anything smells like a diptyque fragrance, it's Lux. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. I don't want my hair to feel like dry, but I want, I want some grit to it so that Ali hates it when my hair's gritty. But anyway, let's head downstairs. Quickly, before I head downstairs, I have just received this little cow shed um, essential sleep set. And this would make such a lovely Mother's Day gift. It's got a little candle in it. It's also got a pillow mist, which Ali and I use so many pillow mists. We go through them so quickly and it smells delicious. And it's also got um, some bath salts. And I love cow shed products. It's from the spa at Soho House and everything just smells delicious but it's obviously in line with their beautiful understated branding so I'm actually going to steal this one we've already got our mum's um their uh, mother's day gifts but this one is definitely for us well all of Ali's gear is laid out so these are some bits and pieces that he's clearly picked up for using with the the pizza oven it is pouring outside but he's determined these are the different doughs that he's got but we were also bought an entire dough making kit uh, for Christmas from his um, brother although I don't know if we're gonna we, we, we might try that in future it might be a bit much now so he's got everything laid out he's just been watching some videos so that he can learn the ropes and it's gonna take two hours to fire up our pizza oven I have to be honest I feel gross speaking to you when I've got a full face of makeup and I'm still in my dressing gown I just I don't know what that is I just need to I need to chill but I'm actually really enjoying that product it's given my hair exactly what I wanted, like that just, that bit of grit. And I also feel like maybe it's helped these drop a little bit. But yeah, I'm very happy. So am I right in being- That's uh, to test the heat of my pizza oven, a laser. So it's like what, what they use to test your temperature? Yeah, yeah, that's why yeah. I was gunning it the other night, yeah. Yeah, oh, I didn't realize that was what it was. I just, I just think, why have you got one of those lasers? Has Ali gone back in time to like COVID times where he's testing people's yeah, temperatures? Yeah, so you want to make sure the pizza oven, obviously, yeah. Right temperature. Fascinating. Um, I'm just going to start proofing these. So you need this one? No, not now. I don't need any. Oh, other. okay. I'm just unpacking it for you. I'm a sushi chef as usual. Yeah. So this is a gluten free dough. Amazing. So we have our gluten free guests. And all I'm going to do is. Oof. These a little bit of bread. Okay. So this has two handles. Sticky. Oh, so you can make it extra long. Yeah, that's the that's what it's coming Do you want it longer than this then? Huh? I think that's gonna be long enough to get into our pizza oven. That's to play around with it. You wanna be quite far away, it's gonna be really hot. Okay. That one's short for sliding the pizza in. Yes. But that's to play around with it. Might be. So we get out there, I won't know. Yeah, okay. We are prepping the dough. All hands were washed before filming. So we have all of the doughs set out. Do you want to get a toothpick so we can identify? Well, yeah, so I know that these two are sourdoughs. That is a original dough and this is the gluten-free. I was just saying to Lids, I've learned a lesson straight away. I over folded this gluten-free dough ball, as you can see. <laughs> Less yeah, so lesson learned. So it's all about tucking as opposed to folding. And I obviously felt folded this gluten-free dough, which split the dough. And so I probably ruined that, but we'll do it anyway. It might be a rustic one. I'm sure you it's going to be lovely. You can see how, I think it's, what's really important, I think with dough is all about the air pockets and the way in which it mm -hmm. sort of like is, anyway. Time to get the, the pizza about, oven. No, I'm talking about, I don't. Time to get the pizza oven fired up. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to leave these on the side to rest, get to room temperature. I'm just going to leave that like that. They will expand and rise a little bit and then we'll put our toppings. semolina, this, and flour mixed is what we will use on the um, 
dough when it's out. Oh. So I might start off with a little bit of flour and then we'll add that and that onto our pizza. And then that will help as you're sliding it into the pizza. Right. Oven. You don't want it to get stuck. Lubrication. So it's basically like little balls that will help slide right, off. Right, right, right. Got yeah. you. Ball bearings. Ball bearings. I mean, eventually we can play around with like yeah, yeah. and all of this stuff. Garlic bread. Yeah, lovely. Porty, I love that you're hoping. It does say pot and put them in a proofing pot and cover with cling film or a lid. This will stop the dough balls drying out. Okay. So clean, that is actually no good, we need clean film. Yeah, but I think we've got lots of lovely ramekins that are going to be perfect for- They are perfect. I, I, I know. <laughs> well, I think that that's what it looks like generally. You want them to rise, don't you? You don't want them to expand. Well, I'm going to get that fire out there. So for now, until we get proper proofing pots, we've just put them in these clay pots with some clean film over the top. Hopefully it doesn't restrict them too much. This will help stop the balls drying out and forming a crust. So we're going to leave these on the side for six hours and then when we're ready, we'll get that oven going. However, we don't have six hours. So instead, we're going to use a little hack that they've shared on great balls of flour. We're putting the oven on to 50 degrees. We're going to allow that to hit temperature, wait five minutes, and then we're going to put these in the oven and it will speed up the process and it will take 40 minutes to get these into prime condition. So. Let's do this. Not started off on the best foot, have I, here? Why? Well, because my preparation, which is key, fell at the first hurdle. First yeah, I know, you live and you learn. Learning. Yeah. That's exactly why we're doing it tonight. But I didn't do my, my due diligence, did I? I didn't check Lesson earlier. Lesson learned. Lesson learned, I know. As I mentioned, it is um, very wet outside, but Mr. Mill and Gordon is determined. There's one thing about that, that man. he. He doesn't like to let things stand in his way and he had set his mind to the fact that he was using the pizza oven today and so the rain will not stop him so he's getting that fired up now at the moment a little bit covered by our olive, olive trees that are waiting to go into the basement if i'm feeling brave i will head out there as well i keep putting his head inside <laughs> oh my gosh he's got a death wish here we've got a better view from here let me look he's got his eyes like getting inside Stucking up with the wood, getting ready to light the pizza oven. Oh, it's so exciting. Well, as you can see, we've got perfect weather for it. And what I've done is I've loaded some kindling in the middle, two large pieces of birch wood either side and one on the top. I'll now leave this for probably an hour. Come and check on it. I'm expecting it to take anywhere between one to two hours. And this should then sort of like get really nice and hot be left with some ambers at the bottom. I'll then move it to the side, add another log, allow the ceiling of the pizza oven to get nice and hot. One of the telltale signs is you'll start seeing a nice white kind of chalky finish. I'll then flip it across to the other side and then clean up the floor using a wet cloth and then that will be then primed and ready for our pizza dough to go on. So it's just a waiting game now. Well, the pizza oven is still going outside, but I have not got dressed today. I promise you I showered, but I just didn't get dressed. So I thought, why not have pizza in pajamas? And this is a new set of pajamas as well. I got these from Amazon. These are the same as the sage green ones, but these are like an off-white blush, which I am so happy about. There's nothing worse than a pair of pajamas that are white, that are no longer white, <laughs> and just kind of like a bit of a dirty white. I like the fact that these are a very, very subtle blush like literally the perfect complementary colour for like a sage green, for example. So I'm hoping to get them all lined up in my pyjama drawer so that they like all colour coordinate, but they're so soft. And this is the Capri style. So more of a spring summer, I would say this one, because it's got the short sleeves and it's got the Capri pants, but you can get the full length version of these as well. They also do loads of other colours. They do like navies, blacks and whatever, but I'm obviously in full spring prep mode and yeah, so I pop these on and I'm just gonna chill out for the rest of the evening, I think, but I'm looking forward to sampling Mr. Mill and Gordon's pizzas. Although we are, we're basically establishing that it needs a lot more to like get this pizza oven hot, especially at this time of year. Um, but like I said, this was very much like a learning process and um, it's all about perfecting this so that when we have parties in the garden, it's Ali's just gonna be like, got it nailed but yeah this is I'll link these in the description box because I love them they're so soft but yeah I'm going to show you the rest of the items that I bought tomorrow oh hello angel puff oh you are just exquisite 
Everyone loves you. They do. They do. They love you. <laughs> you gay? You want to sit on your mommy's lap? You want to sit on your mommy's lap? Yes, you do. I can tell. That swooshy tail. Like a supermodel. Well, it's now nearly eight o'clock and we're on the home stretch. Well, I would say we're actually probably could do the bread. The dough hasn't probably proofed enough. But I'm not waiting any longer. Yeah. The good thing is, is that if, if this doesn't work, we can try again and we have food ready to go in the fridge. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so, yeah, because yeah, I'm absolutely So just don't do anything where you are, so I'm just about to do that because that's for the dough. So we work for the food here and then we powder the dough there. Yeah? Okay. So you want to do olive oil? No, I'm doing the cheese. No, you, want you, the oil. Right. <laughs> you want to do the olive oil. You want to do the olive oil. There's nothing to do with me. We're going to do garlic, olive oil and rosemary on one. And then I'm going to have some peppers, cheese, tomato sauce. I really like these Dales for uh, dogs. They're really good, aren't they? Yeah, they are actually. Get more. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you think the sausage dogs deserve some cheese? Zero. Well, to so be honest. We do have some cheese tacks to come. Yeah. So what sort of things can we do on my pizza then? Because we didn't obviously buy any ingredients for this because it was a bit last minute. Well, have you got any meats? No, that's what I was hoping for, but I've just looked at that. Well, then I think we're just going to have to settle on some cheese and tomato and some garlic and rosemary. Mm. Here you go, Bugly. Good boy. Sit. Am I just going to grate this whole block? Yeah. Maybe I should have just put it in the first place then. <laughs> I didn't think of this. Yeah, late night pizza feast. Yeah. As you can see, it's a bit sticky. What, so, so what happens? It gets a crust. It's got a crust because we put it in the oven. Oh. And it wasn't sealed and we needed sealed pots, but we don't have them. Oh, so okay. So birthday present for Ali is some yeah, proving you pots. Can, you can do that. Yeah. So we'll just, we'll just roll in it in a little bit of flour as we leave. Around. Getting very thin. Yeah, that's what you want. You want it to be nice and thin. So this is this this one here is going to be our garlic bread. Garlic bread, yeah. You can see. You say careful. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to allow it to hang down. Oh my god. I'm being funny, but I'm going for the 12 inch. <laughs> I think that's enough now. Yeah. Okay. You don't want it too big. Okay. Right. Oh. A little air pocket. So in future, we'll probably use garlic cloves. Yes, this is just a test. And we have just said that actually we would have included some butter, but we actually ran out of butter as well today. You wouldn't think it was food shop delivery day, would you? So we've, um, we've settled just to have like a garlic bread with some rosemary. I think it'd be nice. It looks like it could do with a bit more royal, I'd say. A little sprinkle of that. Very delicate of you. Well, you are like a bull in a china shop. I'm getting prepared for the big orders. Got to bash it out. <laughs> There's a party going on. Japanese pizza. <laughs> First one going in. Ready? Yeah. Do you think? Ooh. Oh my gosh, you can see it like. Wow. Well, not a lot was happening and then all of a sudden That's the crust first. started puffing up and Ali's just done his first turn. <laughs> it's looking good. How exciting is this? And this was such a dream of ours for such a long time. Even though the kitchen's not in yet, this is just fantastic, isn't it? Smell it. Smells amazing. Oh yeah, wow. Maybe a little bit overdone, babe. Overdone? Yeah. Well, I was worried about it not being done enough. You know, you get it in your mouth and let me know what you think. Yeah, that is overdone. <laughs> Somebody get a hammer and chisel. <laughs> oh, it looks good. It looks good, but you just, you have to get the... the it's hot still, isn't it? Yeah. The ratio right of it being doughy 
to when to, like that's still on the inside so the first one was a little bit overdone but it still tasted delicious um, but Ali's just gone out with the second one and he's come in and he's just said to me he's like I am so happy babe and you know when you're like oh you wait until you have the whole kitchen out there but he does this thing I try and show you that when he's really excited about something he does this dance I need to try and get him doing it on camera because he'd never let me post it on the internet where he's like, he goes like this. <laughs> but honestly, there's some parts of Ali that I'm like, I really wish he'd let me like share it on the internet. But he's honestly, when he gets excited, it's my favorite thing. And so I said to him, I was like, oh, I'm really looking forward to all of the pizzas that you're gonna make me this summer then. Cause I know that when Ali enjoys something, he'll want to do it all the time. Um, but he said he's, he's having loads of fun doing it. And obviously like, this has been such a labor of love, this garden. And obviously with his shed now in, and I know the kitchen, the outdoor kitchen isn't in, but we're obviously using the um, pizza oven. And he's just, just the fact that he's enjoying it is like, it sounds so silly, but it's just lovely. It is lovely. <laughs> it's the task. It's the bum sticking out. I'm gonna ask him to do it. He won't do it. He literally will not do it. In fact, the thing that I know is that if I say to him, babe, Will you do your like happy dance? He'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not really a happy dance. It's not, I mean, what? He'll just pretend like it's not even a thing. <laughs> Ooh. -hoo. That's quicker. Yeah. Yeah. It smells good. For you, there's, I put too much tomato on, but I can't. No, 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 I'll be okay with that. Although I put was just telling everyone on. about your happy dance. My happy dance? Yes. Where do you stick your bum out? Will you show them? Will you show them? I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you showed them. <laughs> I was literally saying about the happy dance, and uh, I was like, oh, he'll he'll pretend like he doesn't even know what I'm talking about. It looks better, doesn't it? Can you do it in three, or do you want it in four? four. Feels like I'm having more then. <sighs> oh yeah, that's a good bottom. Okay, take two. Oh yeah, that feels better. Does it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Crusty in, on, on the outside, soft in the in. I checked the bottom and it looked good. So, I'd say this was in for half the amount of time than the last one. I just get nervous that it's underdone, but I don't think this is. Thank you. Let's do the taste test. Do you be my guest? You're having a bit of a snuggle. And I'm sat here and all I can smell is cheese twists from the bakery and it's got me thinking so I um, I stumbled I keep saying that I stumbled across a video on TikTok but I did stumble across a video on TikTok which was a, about this it was this lady and she was saying that if your if your dogs have that sort of um, cheesy what's it yeasty smell this is what you should do to get rid of it and it's like like mixing up this concoction of like iodine or something like that and apparently the smell actually comes from their pores i thought maybe it came from this area mm. but it comes from their pores but my first thought when i saw that video was why would anyone want to get rid of the cheesy twist smell why would you want to get rid of it it's like it's like their dna and then I went to the comments and everyone was like, uh, sorry, I'm not interested in getting rid of the cheesy smell of my dog. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm so glad. I thought it was just me. But sometimes it's like that, that um, other TikTok where they go, ah, oh, ah, yeah. oh, that's literally what I'm like with them. I'm like, ah, oh, you make your mum I think Lumi smells better than the dogs. But the thing is, is Lumi just absorbs the she smells does. around her, so she just most of the time smells of your aftershave. Yeah. Whereas the dogs smell like it's it's. I remember when we picked up Porter, and I was like, mm, he smells so strange. Like I wonder if he'll ever lose this smell. No, no, you still smell exactly like the day we picked you up. We are just getting ready for bed and this is probably my favourite part of the evening now because obviously the boys sleep in our bedroom. Porter is already in bed but Barclay's been hanging around outside and I'm going to see if I can show you my favourite part. Yeah, come on, you can come in. You can come in, come on. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> good boy. In you go. Off you go. Good 
good boys in your bed. Straight in his bed. He is the most behaved out of the both. Porter likes to stay up past his bedtime, but Barkley is always straight in his bed. Good boy, Porty. Good boy. Good boy. And now we make our bed. Now we make our bed, don't we, Barky? Oh, goodness me. <laughs> He's fully in his bed. Oh dear, we're, we're wrestling now. <laughs> oh, Barkley, let me help you. Here, there we go. Little bit, there we go. Little nighttime royal rumble before we go to bed. And then this little madam is waiting for me to get into bed. So I'll get her settled before I get myself ready for bed. Come on, Mimi. Up you come. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Straight away. I can't even get into bed in time for you to want to snuggle down. You're so silly. Good girl. You're ready to snuggle down. And that is our bedtime routine pretty much every night nowadays. <laughs> I can see you. In your bed. Good boy. And that is the closest that I have ever got in my life to being even remotely mum-like because I have to, obviously have to put them in bed and then I've got to settle down Lumi and I've not even had the chance to get myself ready for bed. Before the, these ones, they're all looking at me. I can see Porter looking at me. Lumi's just like, shut up woman and go to sleep, but got to wait for Mr. Miller Gordon to come in. In your bed, Porty, good boy. And happy Friday, everyone. We had a lovely evening last night, just enjoying the pizza oven. And we woke up this morning to snow and we've been through every season since the snow and now it is beautiful sun sunshine outside. So I'm going to quickly unbox the um, order that I made. This is an online order from Hermes and um, these are some bits. Let me explain, I think probably, why is there never any space? We can put anything down on this, we're in a huge oven. Yes, so these were some bits. Well, one of these items I actually tried to buy when I was at the airport, but this is a while ago and they actually didn't have my size. So I nearly bought them, but they didn't have my size. And the other item is a first. I've never bought one of these from Hermes before. And I was holding out for something, something different, but nothing has yet come in and I've kind of taken the plunge with it, but I'm not entirely sure. You're going to have to give me your honest feedback, although I doubt you've seen me wearing it in this video, because it is a scruff, not scruffkins day, but like a, a relaxed day, because we're going to the pub later in our village with friends, and uh, we're going for dinner and drinks. And so I think we're probably not going to really dress up for that, because... Ali and I may walk there, we haven't really decided yet, it's all kind of up in the air, but yes. So, so we have two boxes in here. These were purchased from online. I basically keep tabs. I probably check the Hermes website once a day, just because items come into stock that you're, list that you're like looking out for, that I am anyway. And because I don't live in a major city, I'm not exactly going to travel all the way to London and go into every Hermes store in London. So I just generally keep an eye on the website and see what comes into stock on there. And so the little box here. This one is a bit unlike me. It's not my usual style and I'm kind of going to see how it goes. But also, <laughs> it's so funny. So basically, I bought one of their belt kits which I haven't really been into in the past, but I wanted a Rouge, Rouge H belt and this was the only one that they had and it's reversible. So I'm obviously probably never going to wear this color because I think that that's probably a little bit too colorful for me, but the other side is Rouge H. And I have gone for a not very quiet luxury belt 
but the good thing about these is you can change out the buckles and i did obviously we've all seen the the very you know the kind of lads that dress in a very certain way where they have like the Hermes belt with the h on it shirts tucked in probably a little bit too small for them todd's loafers that kind of thing i, I don't want to go for that look but i did go for the h on the belt and i feel like it's not very me at the moment but i did quite like it i follow a girl on instagram and she had this thin version and it felt more understated and i i'm not sure maybe i'll eat my words but what i like is that if i do like if i do find that the h is a bit too much for me i can change out the belt buckle so i now have my belt i have my little rouge h belt to match my bag and to match my shoes um, obviously it's a different leather but the color is pretty much yeah we're kind of going with that i think um but yes so i got the belt which i'm very excited about it actually i can't remember what size i got this in 75 but i have one of those really handy hole punches for belts so yeah i may i may do that as well yeah so i went for the gold little mini h on there and so that's another little understated belt they don't really do a lot of these belts but they're they're more decorative and then for the shoes which i've just given the game away the shoes in this box are the i think these are called the oasis sandals so these have the slight heel much like the Iran but these have the slight heel because I wanted something that was a bit more understated than my um what are they called my uh Valentino rock studs but still had a bit of a heel and I wear my Iran's so much in summertime um so I thought these would be a good one and actually I like I said I tried these on um when I was at the airport a few years ago not a few years ago, a few months ago, and they didn't have my size, but they have my size now. And so I snatched them up, which I love. They, I feel like they've worked on the Iran sandal, like size and fit as well. So they used to be so narrow, like my black ones are so narrow, but now these, I don't know, they're just really, really comfortable. So that was why I took the plunge with those two items. And these are items that I have, that, like neither of these are impulse purchases. Like I've spent months mulling these over waiting for another rouge age belt to come in and i just thought to myself do you know what i've not actually got one of these and i love the idea of being able to change the buckle and keep this color so actually it made more sense to get this one than a belt in a different color that i've already got the style of it's just something a bit different so those are those items that i got from there i need to go into the garden because like i said it's been snowy today and um, I need to go and check on things in the greenhouse and hope that everything's okay. I also still haven't got those blooming uh, asparagus crowns in the ground, so I'm gonna try and chuck them in there really quickly as well. Um, but yeah. I am being the world's worst vlogger at the moment. Yesterday, all I did was unbox with you and then we ended up going to the um, local pub with our friends. It's one of our friends is getting married in a few months time and basically we were just going for dinner ahead of that but i'm doing the whole not washing my hair thing so i currently have an oil bun i feel like oil buns are going to be um my hairstyle for like getting me through the week because i've obviously i want to get my hair to a point where i get to wash it once a week and so this is actually a style i'm inspired by myself here because karen millen just shared a picture of me when we were in the maldives and i was wearing the notch neck linen dress and my hair was like this with this exact twilly and I actually really like it so I'm going to get into the habit of doing my makeup and then doing my oily bun and hoping that it's going to help my hair with its progression. Um, I'm wearing this H&M jumper with a Ralph Lauren shirt, actually no this isn't a Ralph Lauren shirt, this is a um, Beaufort and Blake shirt, page denim jeans and I've also got my um, Amazon riding boots on which honestly I don't think I've ever had the mickey taken out of me more than in my video on TikTok where I'm wearing these and I'm so fascinated because these boots are pretty much identical to the Hermes boots and they hold their shape better and I actually end up wearing these more than I wear my Hermes boots because my Hermes boots are slouchy now and these are beautiful and structured apparently people laughed at me because they're what you use when you're like a complete amateur at, at horse riding and i don't care about that stuff they look nice and i don't care what the cool kids say um so yeah these are actually 
a win. I got them off Amazon. They cost like, I think like 30 quid or something like that. They're riding, they're riding shaped rubber boots. So like welly boots, but not. And they look so smart. Let me show you them on, see if you can see. These are the boots. I think that they're so flattering on the legs. And the thing with the Hermes boots is they slouch at the ankles, whereas these just don't. And I think they're great. I think they look great. They make your legs look super long. They look so lovely with like black jeans like this or like black leggings. These are such a great one. I forgot that these were in the boot room and I was like, I forgot that I have those boots. Um, but yes, so that's what I'm wearing today. With the bun, we're gonna get used to this. And my samples have arrived from Alternative Flooring. So this is the carpet that we have on our stairs and on the landing. It's my favorite, favorite carpet. If I could do it all again, I think I'd do all of the bedrooms in this particular carpet. It's so, so beautiful. And at the moment I'm trying to choose the whipping, not the whipping, but like the border for it. I really like this one, but obviously it needs to go with the color in the room. So I was gonna go for a more natural, more natural one. I need to, ideally I need to find the right uh, fabric for the blinds in my dressing room and then sort of cohesively put it all together. But I've got a few options here. I do really like this one. This one is called cashmere, but it's got that beautiful brownie green undertone to it. But then this is the cotton herringbone in latte. And yeah, I've got to decide what I'm gonna do. But basically I've got two runners being made for my dressing room to help with acoustics, but to also soften things um, in there as well. And I'm really looking forward to getting them in there as well as going for some fabrics. I've got a lady coming over in a few weeks to look at fabrics for the house and for blinds and things like that. Oh, we have a soggy sausage in the house. Have you just had a bath? You have just had a bath. Oh my goodness, you've just had a bath. I bet you smell like Hermes yourself. You smell like Hermes yourself. My soggy, oh my goodness me, you smell delumptious. You smell delumptious. They've just had a lovely bath from daddy and they're smelling amazing with their shampoo and conditioner from their auntie Lauren. From Hermes. I love you. Little soggy butt butt. We are going out in the Royal Rover. <laughs> Okie dokie. This is the third time that I'm going in this car. I went in it the other day because it was Alex, my friend's birthday, and we went for brunch at Nonna's in Woburn. And it's so weird, I always say Nonna's in the way that everyone around here says Nonna's, and I don't say it like an Italian, it's Nonna's. <laughs> I don't know why I say Nonna's. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I haven't really got to drive it much, but there's a few things that I've noticed about this car already. Oh, it smells so good. It's, first of all, it smells so good, but there's some things that I've no car so good. noticed about this car that it doesn't, that the other one doesn't, and I can't remember what it is, and I love it. What's that? There's something that this car does that the other car didn't do. Oh, um, it reads out my text messages for me. Uh, the settings. I'm sure the other one could have done. Yeah, no, I probably didn't know, but it basically reads out my, my um, text messages and I need to set my um, These are nice. Yeah, so I got... To... I know, because I thought the other day we need to get some of these in here. Yeah, so I got... Some, basically, at what Ali is talking about, I was going to show you them. I got us some colour-coded um, cleaners. Uh, cleaners for the screens in here, because obviously there's multiple different screens, so I got an ivory one and a tan one. I also got a new... Um, diptyque like uh, fragrance air freshener in here. I always have diptyque in my car. Um, nice, and I got some sticky pads so that you don't slide around on there. So that's good, I need to stick them down. But anyway, one of the other things that's really good about the car is because it's got that like four wheel, what is it, the, th the thing that it's got that means it can turn in a really tight circle? What is that called? I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, so it's got this thing where it's got like all the wheels turn on the car. So having a driveway like ours, it means that you can turn in a really tight area, which is really, really handy. Mm. And self park. I haven't used the self park yet. I've not, I've not got the, um, the minerals to put that to the test yet. But anyway, we've come to the local garden center. Ali needs to pick up some bits to mend a fence and, um, I'll probably end up buying plants like I usually do and lots of other things. So head inside. We've got the first of the plugs here. So we've got some peas, we've got some spring onions, lots of little bits and pieces all ready to go. 
Oh, it gets me so excited. Well, I've just found this abundance of Lily of the Valley uh, bulbs, and I think I'm gonna pot up some of the um, some of the pots that I've already got with flowers because they've kind of gone over now. So I'm gonna buy a few of these and transplant them into new pots. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. I love Lily of the Valley. There is so much newness in here. Oh my goodness, and what I love is delicate white little flowers like this in pots. <gasps> I'm a kid in a candy store at the moment. My goodness me. Barkley's asleep in the living room, so I know you've seen a lot of Porter in this vlog. There is one thing that I've realised. So when we were at the garden centre, we saw a little uh, chocolate dappled sausage dog. Uh, do you, do you, do you mind? Um, and whenever I see a sausage dog, I know I've spoken about it on this channel, but there is something about the shape of them that affects people in ways that I've not really ever seen another dog affect people. Whenever we. <laughs> Dad! He's seen his dad in the garden. <laughs> Can't usually see out the windows. Ali's in the, Ali's in the garden doing some work. <laughs> Must go and investigate. Barkley, come here. Because people need to see you. We're having a conversation about sausage dogs, so we need to have at least one sausage dog present. I've, obviously I've spoken to you about the shape of them and how like people see them and instantly they smile like there's something about them Something about the breed of dog. I know that like dogs in general definitely have that effect on people But there is something about sausage dogs that make people see them and go <laughs> Anyway, we saw a sausage dog in the um, garden center and I obviously see them and I just lose my mind and I'm like, oh my goodness Hello, mister. Nice to meet you but people don't know that I'm a sausage dog mum as well and I feel really bad and I wish that like these guys were there because then I think they'd understand. They'd be like, oh, she's a crazy sausage dog mum too. That is why she's saying hello as if they are a people because she understands the sausage dog life. But genuinely, I don't know what I would do. Like there will never be a time in my life now that I don't have a sausage dog, never. It's just not possible. Not when they are this wonderful. Like, look at him. Look at him. I mean, he's quite a big boy. You're quite a big boy for a sausage dog. <laughs> Your breath. Oh. He always wants to kiss with tongues. Barkley really is one of those dogs that's like, I want to kiss in or around your mouth. I could honestly do a, like an hour long vlog and just talk to you about the things that I love about them and it really would be like for me the most interesting video I think I've ever done. Like all of their funny quirks and they're the one thing along with Lumi of course that like when I'm feeling like my lowest there is something about having like I feel like everyone that ever feels like sad should be like allowed to have a dog because honestly just kissing you and being your mummy. And I know that not everyone likes, you know, small dogs, but I feel like these are different when it comes to small dogs. These are a, a small dog, but th they think that they're big. Bye. Bye, my smallie. It is now Sunday and I have been so weird in this vlog. I genuinely don't know what has gotten like gotten into me. I'm so bizarre when it comes to vlogging. Sometimes I'll get one day and I'll get an entire vlog out of that one day. And sometimes I just kind of itty bitty vlog and I end up vlogging over an entire week and I could have just done that in like two days at the very least. So you've had kind of bits of every single day and I, I have no explanation other than the fact that sometimes I just go through these this weird thing where I like, I don't know, it's almost like my vibe of vlogging changes. I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd finish off this vlog with um, me actually potting up my lilies of the valley. I was 
so chuffed to find these. I've changed up how I do my home decor so much in terms of like mainly going for pots and things like that. Uh, sorry, I keep seeing Lumi running around in the garden. So I'm like, hello. So yeah, and they actually had some really good things at our garden center as well. I think I might go back and get, they had these like mini autumn ferns and I think they'd look so cute in little pots. So I think I might go back and get some of those at some point. Oh my gosh, there's a pheasant in the garden. Uh -huh. I love them so much. I have to be so careful because they really like react. I can see it's just there. Oh, my windows are so dirty. I'm waiting to have my, um, <laughs> my greenhouse cleaned. Look at him. Oh, they're just so handsome. Anyway, I'm going to get these potted up. Tomorrow, I'm going to be starting another vlog and I'm so excited for this vlog. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the mascari bulbs. I'm going to chop these little plants back, keep the bulbs and plant them in the soil for next year so that we get little mascari coming up around the garden as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to swap out. Basically, I'm just going to reuse the bits and pieces that I have from Hello Petal and just put in new new flowers. I'm hoping that these Lily of the Valley will do okay inside as well. I've never, I've never had Lily of the Valley. I don't know if they do well inside, but I did see on Flower Box that they sell little pot, potted um, Lily of the Valley, so I'm assuming that they must do okay inside. Anyway, I digress. I bought 10 of them. I also have some little shallots to go in the garden, but I don't think I'm going to get that done because as you can see, it's quite grey today, but I'm hoping new lease of life, just changing up my pots, my little sweet peas are still sweet peeing. In fact, oh, this is coming up as well. We've got little bits coming up there. This is good. Oh, it's exciting, but these ones still have not come up. So I think I'm just letting these ones go. See, I want to be outside, but I've just done my hair and it's raining and I would usually pot outside, but I don't want to make a mess in here again. <gasps> I'm gonna see if I can get these cleared in an amount of time that is good. Also, if you're wondering, this is the Holland Cooper coat without the uh, gilet on the inside. This is the dream in terms of like a throw on, warm, comfortable coat. I honestly like, it is absolutely phenomenal. I love it. Well, I actually managed to pull the whole thing out in one go. So I'm just gonna try and get all of the moss and bits and pieces so that I can pop it around these little lilies of the valley and just reuse what I can really. Have the little branches to prop up the... And just get everything. Butted the table. <laughs> if you didn't know, Lumi and I are best friends. We actually are best friends. Like, she always wants to be with me. But the dogs are obviously, like, different, but Lumi is something special. Well, I feel like I might have nailed this, to be honest with you. There's a little bit of moss in there. I like it to look quite rustic and things like that. Obviously, you can see the little shoots of the Lily of the Valley there. Um, they're not quite so beautiful as the bulbs, but we'll see how they turn out. I don't want to cover up the shoots too much, but at the same time, I don't want to see the soil. I literally just reused the moss that I've like shoved it around the bulbs, because I think I prefer the asphagnum moss better than the bun moss. I think it looks more like woodlandy, personally. You going out, Lily? Come on. Honestly, Lumi, you are a pain in the ass. Off. Of my lilies of the valley, off. Come on. You're getting in the way now. I know you want to sit on my lap, but you're getting in the way. I know, I know. <laughs> I 
blue leaf. Three bulbs, done. Yes, Amy, you are naughty. Well, it is getting dark now. You can see from the light and the fact that the lights are on in my greenhouse, um, but it will probably look light outside. Um, I was going to do just the, the pots on the table, but I've done the planter in the living room, and I think I've got just about enough left to do two pots in my dressing room. So I'm just gonna get it done, because I hate the thought of them sitting in here, not, you know, getting nutrients or whatever so hopefully oh, i'm making such a mess <laughs> ali has decided to cook a roast i am getting very very used to these regular sunday roasts that we're having it's making me exceptionally happy and after we had our um pizza evening the other night i think he's getting just as excited about doing the pizzas as he is doing uh the roast and that excites me greatly as well. They were absolutely delicious. So anyway, I know that this has been a little bit all over the place, this vlog, but I feel like that's what it's been like this week. I've kind of been here, there and everywhere. And Ali came into my dressing room and he was like, should we go out for dinner? And I was like, Ali, we went out last night. Obviously I didn't take you with me because we're going with our friends that aren't necessarily on social media. So I often have to say to you like, we went and did this, but I respect our friends too much to just randomly shove a camera in their face all the, all of the time. If I warn them, like if I'm throwing a party and I'm like, guys, this is going to go on my YouTube, then that's on them. But um, And when we go to the local pub and we're just enjoying like a quiet evening, enjoying a, a glass of wine or something like that, I don't necessarily get my camera out. So last night we were at a pub um, where Ali grew up and then the night before we went for dinner at the local pub here with two couple friends. Like I said, one of them's um, getting married soon, so... Uh, we're just catching up ahead of that basically. So yeah, this evening we're staying in, Ali's cooking a roast, he needs to get it, get it going ASAP. So I'm going to get these potted up and I'm going to leave this vlog here. I don't even know if this vlog is long, so I can't apologise for anything, so I'm just going to let what will be, will be. <laughs> but I did also want to say thank you so much for all of the love on my um, new car video. I was a little bit nervous about that and seeing the supportive community that like we've cultivated now, I think a lot of the time it comes down to communication, doesn't it? And a lot of the time on the internet, it's really hard to communicate everything that you need and everything that is your intention in one go. And so often I'll film a clip and I'll be like, oh, I wish I said that because I feel like it puts my intentions across better. Um, obviously that's really hard on TikTok <laughs> because you don't have much time. and old people like me attempting to do TikTok, uh, you can obviously sometimes get misunderstood, which I learned recently. But I'm, I think I'm kind of used to being misunderstood nowadays, but yeah, I just, I, I love that we're cultivating a space where I think that we understand each other so much more. And I know that I'm not the normal person all of the time. I have a lot of interesting quirks, but I'm just glad that you guys, it has, <laughs> accepted me for who I am. Anyway, I'm gonna finish potting up these bits and pieces and I will see you guys in my next vlog. I'm literally just constantly finding seeds everywhere at the moment, it's ridiculous, but yeah, anyway. See you in the next vlog. <laughs>